Hey guys, welcome back to another part of this series. Today we're finally gonna go into the fun stuff. I know in the last couple of uh, parts of the series, uh, retopology, bakes, UVs, all that stuff, it's, it's actually quite boring. But if everything was fun, then everyone would be doing what we do as a job, right? So uh, let's jump right into what we have, which is this thing right here. And uh, this is the reconstructed little like earpiece that I did. I have the helmet and I have the horns. Now the problem, the only problem that we have right now, well, there's a couple of problems actually. First of all, we don't have a proper naming convention. So it's super important that we clean this up. Uh, as you can see, this is the high poly of the element. So I'm gonna call this ADEX helmet, helmet underscore high, very important. And then this same name is gonna be for this one, but we're gonna call this underscore low. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call this um, ADEX helmet, or we can just call this horns underscore low. And uh, if we just copy this name and paste it right here, these are going to be the ears. Now, I don't want the ears and the horns to affect any of the ambient occlusion of the helmet. Maybe. Uh, I'm still hesitating whether or not to have that. So I'm just going to grab all of these guys. Control G to group them together into a single element. We're going uh, to call this helmet underscore low. And uh, this is what we're going to export. But before we do that, we definitely need to check out the UVs, right? H how are we going to be dealing with the UVs here? And uh, lately, I've been working a lot with UDIMS. It's very, very comfortable, to be honest. Uh, you don't have to connect as many things in the Hypershade. So I'm going to do it with UDIMS very, very quickly here. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to grab all of them. and I'm going to say modify. Uh, we're going to lay them out. And we're going to lay them out in 4K right here. Uh, let's use, yeah, 4K, four tiles sounds good. Of course, it's going to be like super, super heavy. Uh, well, not super heavy, but it's going to be quite, quite heavy. Uh, I did not lay them out for some reason. Sometimes I, I found that uh, for some reason. Okay, see all of this guys right here, the red ones? Those are flipped. So I'm going to grab all of this ones, the red um, elements, and we're going to go modify and flip. So now all of them should be blue. Let's do another control L. And it should technically give us the the Udim tiles, but for some reason it's not doing it. Uh, horizontal, preserve 3D ratios. Yeah, that's really weird. Let's try three, see if that works. I'm pretty sure I do have the plugin turned on. So the plugin is, uh, as always, Windows, Settings, References, Plugin Manager. It's the uh, Unfold 3D. Yeah, it's loaded. So I've, I've, I've been actually having this issue with uh, other projects. The one, the way I've found to solve this is to combine them into a single object. Let's delete history and everything. And when you combine it into a single object, it kind of makes the like the lives easier for, for Maya to know that it has to like create the, the UDIM tiles. Still not doing it. Is it because this is flipped? Sometimes even like s stupid stuff like that could create like the the problem. Let me try this once more, and if it doesn't work, um, I'm not sure what we're gonna do. <laughs> we might have to. I don't want to reset Maya, but it seems like that's what we have to do because I'm not getting any error or anything. It's really weird. Let's try a different layout instead of horizontal. Let's try like vertical. Maybe that changes things. I mean, it shouldn't, but. Uh, yeah, that's really, really weird. I'm not sure. Let's keep this fixed manifold. Maybe that's what's causing it. We shouldn't have any sort of like manifold geometry, but. Mm, yeah, no. One more go there. Nope. Okay, let me, I'm going to pause the video real quick, guys. I'm going to reset Maya and see if that's the problem. I'll be right back. Actually, it's a good idea that you guys see this in case. I mean, probably if you've used Maya before, you've probably done this before. But the only thing you need to do is you go to Documents Maya 2023. And this is the kind of stuff that you uh, like need to, um, what's the word, um, delete. If you have specific like uh, shelves and stuff like that, uh, you might want to save some of them. But I don't think I have anything here. So I'm just going to delete everything. And if I do, I can just like rebuild it, of course. So let's open this real quick. It might take a little bit longer to open because now all of the plugins are activated. Uh, we're just gonna use default preferences. And let's uh, let's jump right into the 
into the unfold, which again, it's really weird that it doesn't work, but what we want to do is we want to lay them out into four different tiles, okay? So I'm going to say file, open scene. Now let's go to our projects here. Right here. I believe it was in, yeah, there we go. Cool. So yeah, UV, UV editor, grab everything, modify, again, layout, make sure on full 3D is turned on. And we're going to have like, let's try four tiles. 10, 24 is fine. There we go. Now it worked. Kind of, right? Because we had that thing over there. Let's try that again. Control L. So yeah, even though it's, it's supposed to be working, we're still getting this sort of issue right here. Which is really, really, really weird, to be honest. Like, if you ask me why we have that, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Uh, but we're going to be able to fix this very, very easily by just grabbing these two guys. Scale them up so that they, like, roughly match the size of the, of the squares, which is something like that. And let's just find a good place for them. There's one thing I want to try. Let's try this again. I'm going to say uh, modify layout. And to avoid going into other tiles, I'm going to go here in the tile padding. And I'm going to add something like 10 pixels. Let's try 4K. Hit apply. There we go. So now everything is, uh, again, <laughs> those little ears right there, they don't like being moved around, apparently. So let's just, again, scale them up, move them into a different position. And there we go. So four tiles is, is more than enough. Again, this is a, a way to save a little bit of space. You can even use this for games, even though it's uh, definitely not uh, advisable because it's going to be really heavy. Uh, but you can definitely do this. And uh, now we need to split this again. So we're going to say mesh, separate. And we should have like uh, the horns. So all of them, get them together. We should have the little ears. Get them together as well. Shift P and we should only have three surfaces. Let's do the history again. So this is gonna be again, ADEX horns underscore low. This is very important. The underscore is very important. This is gonna be ADEX ears and this is going to be adex helmet which should perfectly match this one right here so we grab this tree control g we can call this adex a group a low oh. come on adex a group low there we go and just for um what's the word just for clean a clean a clean element we should have a group for this one. there we go so we grab the high one file expert selection uh we actually didn't set the project of course it's always super important to sell set the project let me do that real quick there we go so on assets sci-fi let's see if this is an fbx it's gonna be adex high we're just waiting for this to write and we got all of these guys right here, a G, and this is gonna be, we can just call this ADEX, because this is of course the low one, so ADEX. So now we jump onto a substance file, and we create a new file, and this is really important. If we're gonna be using UDIMS, we need to use select this thing called UV workflow. We select, and we select ADEX, hit open, and hit OK. If everything worked as expected and things are working fine, we were gonna have our tiles over here and we're now in this uh, sort of like a uh, UDIM tile. So textures and settings, bake mesh maps. We're gonna bake this at 4K. I'm gonna turn on a two by two anti, uh, subsampling anti ally, ally, aliasing, uh, anti aliasing. We're gonna use by mesh name. Here's where the names are important because now what we're gonna do is the ADEX high, this one right here, it will check the names of the objects that we have on our FBX, and it will only bake the normal map from the ones that we have from one side to the other. If we want the ambient occlusion to bake regardless of the names, we just keep it like this. If not, we change the self-occlusion to only by mesh name, but I actually do think that it's gonna look nice to have it like this. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Well, let's hit bake and see how this looks. Technically, I'm expecting to see like the exact same details. The only thing we should see baked is of course the helmet. And as you can see, it's looking kind of nice as you saw in yesterday's video unfortunately due to the boolean thing that we did in zbrush it seems like things are not working perfectly it might have been a setting that i forgot to turn on inside of zbrush when exporting the objects so that it kept everything as clean and as nice as possible uh, but uh, since we're already in this step 
let's just uh, keep moving forward. As you can see, this is definitely taking longer. It's supposed to be using the GPU, which it is using the GPU, but still like four, we're, we're baking four sets of textures at 4K resolution. So that's quite a bit of, uh, of uh, memory that you might be using. Just, just keep that in mind. Uh, thickness, ambient occlusion are usually the ones that take the longer. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, we get this right here. So uh, one thing that happened here, as you can see, is that this guy it didn't find anything on the um, on the normal maps, and that's a little bit annoying. And we also got like the super weird effects. We changed something yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, and I think I forgot to do this right here. So I'm gonna say mesh display, um, harden edges. Like this is what I want to export. Let's try this again file export selection let's do the adex uh, high and down here let's make sure i don't i do want to export smoothing groups tangents and binormals we don't want a smooth mesh yeah that should be that should be it one thing we can do is we can actually grab the horns and the ears duplicate them get them in the high and just change the high so that even though there is no like higher poly count, we still get something. And that way the bakes are not empty. Because as you saw, we can get some issues there. So let's grab this again. File, export selection, ADEX high. Now since it's the same um, file that we're exporting, once this thing exports, mesh. Okay, so it seems like some normals are the problem here. It's a little bit weird. Could be this one, but I'm not sure. Let's go back here. Let's try another bake. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the reader distance a little bit so that we can catch more of the information. And let's try this again. So technically, now that we have uh, high poly information, there we go. You can see the normal map information being baked there. Looks a little bit better. There we go. That's looking a little bit cleaner. Again, I'm not too worried because I know we're going to be using texture to like just hide some of that stuff. Uh, but if you want to be super clean, then you definitely need to be way, way more careful than we did. So far, I think we've invested like maybe like four or five hours on this whole project, which is not a lot of time, to be honest. Um, yeah, so I can see the errors there. Again, not the end of the day, but not ideal either. Okay, cool, cool. So yeah, this looks way, way better as you can see. Yes, we do have a couple of like issues there uh, on the normal maps, but again, as we uh, saw yesterday, once we add our basic, or like just some basic textures and stuff, all of that things are gonna be, uh, we're not gonna see them anymore. So if we were to grab this machinery uh, layer, I, I really like using this for, for testing purposes. And if we check how this thing looks once it's on top of everything, should look better there we go so most of those errors are no longer visible and things are just like flowing and showing nicely so yeah let's start building up our our main the effect right here so we're going to start uh, we're going to use very uh, like all basic materials and i'm going to start with like this iron raw i love using the iron raw because it has a very very nice texture overall i'm going to bring the tiling up a little bit so we can see more but i'm definitely going to turn off the height information i don't want any height information and then on top of this, we're going to use a uh, glossy, like a uh, paint material. And I'm going to add a black mask. And uh, this is going to be my, actually going to be like a white material. There we go. I'm going to use my masking tool using the object selection mode to select all of the pieces that I want to have. This sort of like white mask like that. Look at that. Beautiful. So now, uh, one thing I actually want to do is I'm going to control G this guy. So I'm going to call this helmet. And then uh, we're going to do another one for the horns. The horns are very are going to be like mainly, um, what's the word, a material. We're going to be using a, a shader uh, probably tomorrow on the, um, on Arnold to shade them properly, like uh, like as if they were crystals. Uh, but yeah, like we might add some normal stuff or some normal information. So I'm going to create a field layer here. I'm just going to use like an orange color. I really like the orange tone that we had with this one. So Control G black mask and just fill the horns like that 
So I know that that's going to be like the main color for the horns. And then on this one, when, what we can do is we can add another black mask. Select everything. And then deselect the horns. Uh, let's try a different color just to see. There we go. And that way, when we select these things, we're only going to be affecting um, like this, this other layer. So yeah, th that's it. Like we have the, the basic stuff right here. Now we can start playing around with uh, more more information. So the first thing I want to do is I want to find a color. We're going to go for this sort of like whitish uh, color right here. That one looks looks interesting. I, I like it. Shine wise, uh, I think we are going to bring the roughness a little bit up. I don't want this to be super, super shiny. So more like a plastic. And we're definitely, of course, going to add a metal edge wear. So we're going to go to generators and we're going to add our dirt. And it's going to be, or sorry, not dirt. It's uh, metal edge wear. So right click, add generator, and we're going to add a metal edge wear. We're going to invert this, of course, to get the, the very nice damage in every single like nook and cranny of the of the element right there. See, the models that we model look very good, and the ones that we uh, boolean out, uh, not so good. I, in this case, I will probably not do any booleans and then just do the textures here. I'll, I'll show you in just a second how, how we can do that. Uh, but yeah, that, that looks interesting. Now let's do the visor. I'm going to use this aluminum uh, insulator as the visor. It works really well. Uh, it has a little bit of bumpiness, which I don't love. You're going to see in just a second. <laughs> right there. Uh, but what we can do is, again, we can turn off the height information. That way it's just like a flat surface. And um, we're going to increase the tiling here. So it's a little bit smaller like this. We're going to add a black mask so that we can hide it. And uh, since we don't have an ID map, uh, this is one of those like unfortunate things where we're going to have to like literally paint the mask of the element. One thing we could do is we can go into um, into selection mode. And if your retopology was cleanlish, uh, this should allow you to to select the faces in a in a faster way, as you can see right here. So it should be fairly easy to to go around the border and again the, the cleaner your your retopology or the cleaner your yeah your retopology the the easier this uh, selection is gonna be i don't recommend using uh, the marquee tool at this point because if i do this i'm gonna be selecting other faces like on the back side of this uh like element that you might not want so as you can see we just follow around this whole thing this is not we might add some scratches later on but Right now, I kind of want to keep this clean. Again, that's why retopology is so important. That's why not a lot of people like to do it because it uh, you really need to think about what you're doing to get the, the best possible result. Look at that. Nice, right? Like, not bad. Again, not super polished. We have a couple of, like, weird effects over there, but not the end of the day. Let's erase anything that we might have selected um, by mistake. And, uh, yeah, that, that looks cool. So now we need to think about uh, color blockings, right? Like uh, once we have the, the basic shape of the element, we need to start thinking, okay, where are we gonna have our main material uh, like colors, right? And uh, I one of the best advices that you're gonna get in regards to color theory, if you wanna keep it simple, is grab three colors. You're gonna have your primary color, you're gonna have your like secondary or complementary color, and then you're gonna have your like detail color. So in this case, I think of course, white is gonna be the main color. A black, I think will work very nicely as a, as a complementary color. And of course, the sort of like orange yellowy, it's gonna be like the, that tertiary element. So if we go for the materials, um, there's one material that looks really nice, like this steel rust, for instance, or we can go for this like silicone, right? Like we know these sci-fi helmets or some of the sci-fi helmets tend to have this sort of stuff. Let's bring this down so the elements are up there. I really like this sort of effect. Uh, I definitely gonna increase the tiling a little bit. Like even quite a bit to get that sort of effect. And I do like this sort of like plasticky grain. Um, but I think it's better if we were to reduce it a little bit. So what we can do is we can go to the height information and bring down the intensity of the height so that yes, we do have a little bit of that information, but it's not overwhelming. And then we go black mask and there we go. Now we need to start blocking in where we want this color to be. I think this like middle section right here, it's a perfect candidate. So I'm just gonna select it again having a good retopology, like 
locking in the shapes makes it for a very easy way to to select these things. Uh, this thing down here definitely looks will look better uh, by having these dark colors. So again, in this case, the marquee tool actually works quite nicely because there's nothing else, right? So I'm, I'm not scared of selecting things that I shouldn't select. And whenever we're like doing this sort of stuff, it's, it's important that we, again, we try to to think about the color composition that we're adding to the general element. So I really like this sort of like X shape that we have here with the visor. Uh, and I, I wanna frame it, I wanna frame it a little bit more. So for instance, even this blocks right here, this big chunks of uh, like respirators or stuff, we can definitely have them be uh, black as well. Just be very careful not to select any other piece that we don't want right now. So for instance, this like white metal pieces, we're gonna keep them like like so. There we go. I I have symmetry turned on, of course, to save myself a lot of clicks. There we go. There we go. Cool. So that's another like color blocking that I really like. Um, like this square right here, I think again, that, that could be another like detail. And it has a lot of that, like uh, issues that we had with the normal maps. So hiding it with darker colors is also a, a nice, smart idea. So let's just keep going around this thing. The horns are definitely helping there a little bit by overlapping and hiding a little bit of the, of the details. X at any point to switch between uh, like uh, dark and uh, or black and white. There we go. There we go. So as you can see, by just doing those little like changes right there, we're already framing this in a in a very interesting way. I'm really, really, really liking the idea of framing this thing as well. Let's see how that looks. And one of the cool things is, since this is on the border, it's relatively simple. In this case, using the marquee tool is not a bad idea because again, we can very easily select the limits of the element. This is a super low poly helmet, by the way, guys. Like I, I wouldn't do this for a triple A game. Um, uh, as you guys know, I've been playing some Cineblades uh, lately. And um, this is, I, I would say this is roughly the, the amount of uh, like uh, polygons that they're using for their for their armors. Uh, the one thing that I see different in their designs is that they are a little bit more simple, like bigger shapes, flatter surfaces, and we went a little bit crazy on the on the details on ours. Uh, but it's not a bad uh, it's not a bad idea. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful. That looks really nice. Careful here, we've uh, accidentally selected some of these elements. I don't want that. And now let's go here. I'm gonna use a geometry, and I'm gonna keep uh, this whole geometry and this inner geometry blacks. There we go. On the back, it's a really good question. Oop. On the back, let's go back to uh, polygon fill. Mm, I'm kind of tempted to have this one right here, but at the same time, I really like the, the white simple effect. Maybe this like back thing, uh, thing back here. And this is another one, like you don't have to use the face selection. You could also like paint stuff if needed. Just make sure to keep your, your lines as clean as possible. I'm gonna be really, 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 really clean because that's the that's the there's a saying that says the the devils on the details, right? So being very, very careful there and cleaning the lines is is what's gonna separate your work from from everyone else's. So yeah, there we go. So as you can see, now we have a really good a good construction of the of the colors. Like if we take a look at the at the overall composition. That looks interesting. That looks like a like a fun 
uh, funnel. And we're definitely going to add scratch scratches and stuff like that. And later on, if we're like, hey, you know what, we want this to be metallic, I do believe we can change this to to a metal color, or at any point we can just change, right? Right now we're using the silicone, but if we're like, no, nah, we want uh, like steel, right? Like we just bring the steel here and it's gonna replace it to for, for steel. So I actually kind of like this one. Let's keep the tiling up. That looks interesting. Let's keep it in steel for now. So um, now the components, this is one of, uh, of the important ones that I wanna talk about. So right here on this area, we mentioned that it would be cool to have some sort of like mechanical components. And I do believe we have a smart material, uh, this one, this whole damage one that uh, has that sort of like gerbil effect to it. So if I were to drag this right here, uh, you're gonna see that we get this really interesting. This is a really heavy material, by the way, and using this uh, along with 4K is definitely not, uh, uh, for the faint of heart, <laughs> if you have a, a computer that's struggling a little bit with uh, with the graphics, then this might not be the best idea because it's, it's definitely um, a heavy process. Uh, but what we should get is this sort of like damaged effect. You're going to see in just a second. Mm -hmm. Are we seeing it? That's really weird. I know this is the mask, but I, I was expecting to see some of the information here. Macro hall. Oh, that's really weird. Because I didn't create any sort of, uh, is it because it's out there? It could be because if it's in, inside of a mask, let's see. No, that's really weird. Don't worry. So if that doesn't work, what we can do is uh, either get a material or just just one that we have here. Let me see if we have some sort of uh, metallic something. And if not, let's download one real quick. So if you have access, which most of you should have access to, um, what's the word? Uh, this one right here. We can just go for sci-fi. And we have all of this stuff. So we can find something that looks like wires. Uh, well, let's go here. Let's go. Let's go metals. Those are cool. Those are new, actually. There's, there we go. So this kind of stuff, right? Uh, and actually, I like the rust. Um, sort of thing. So we're just gonna download the archive. We bring the archive into substance, and uh, yeah, that's it. We just let's add it to our assets, and there we go. So now we drop this here. As you're about to see, we're gonna have all of these pipes and stuff. So we're definitely gonna change the tiling. So this is way way smaller. We're gonna add a black mask, and we're gonna select this face is right here. And it's just the tileable textures of like pipes and, and components and stuff. It's a little bit too rusted, I would say, uh, for what we're doing right now, but it's not bad. Uh, we definitely need to paint this one here again, being very, very careful here on the masking side of things. Let's take a look here. So for instance, that little, Again, that, that, this was probably one of the trickiest areas to retopologize because we go in there. Well, there we go. Ah, <laughs> I forgot to do um, uh, symmetry. So let's just do this real quick. And imagine having to model all that stuff. That's why there's a lot of things nowadays that you don't need to model. Uh, and you can solve directly in texturing. There's only one like big disadvantage that I've seen uh, when using this technique of uh, like doing your work in texturing. And that's the fact that if you wanna, for instance, like 3D print your object, well, all of this information is not there, right? So it will it will 3D print flat. Or if you wanna do like a cinematic or a, like a super big close-up, then you, you wouldn't be able to find this sort of stuff. 
But yeah, that, that looks really, really nice. I, I actually kind of like it because we are going to be adding a rust layer to everything. Uh, so it kind of like matches the sort of like rust that we have here. So let's add the rust. Uh, the rust is going to be above everything but below the insulator. I want to keep the insulator uh, clean for now. So I'm going to go for my uh, rust here, rust fine. Add it right here. We're going to add a black mask. And on the, oh, on the generator here, we're going to add a dirt generator, of course. There we go. It's going to make everything dirty. Now, as you can see, the, the color of the rust here, it's not like rust. It's like a, like a golden rust. So one thing I, I might want to do is do that, like change, change the color to this sort of like copper, like rusted effect, kind of like that. There we go. And now I'm going to show you, of course, the trick that I always use to to get a more like natural looking rust, uh, because as I always tell you guys, rust will never uh, rust and dirt and all that sort of stuff will never affect an object like uniformly. You're going to have areas where there's a little bit more and there's a little bit less. You can also see that that really uh, kind of helps the, the overall mood there. So I'm going to go here. We're going to add a fill layer and we're going to add a clouds or a noise or whatever, like some sort of like a random noise here. I'm going to increase the contrast a little bit more. And we're going to multiply this against the rust. So what this is going to do is it's pretty much going to cancel out some of the information. So the more we move this thing, as you can see here, the more or less rust we're going to get. But it's going to be a little bit more uniform. So as you can see, like not, not all of the holes have the same amount of rust. Same on this one's right here. And that's going to give us a really, really, really cool variation uh, on our helmet. If you want, you can like change the, the rust uh, information. Oh, wait. <laughs> this is the... Let's get this linear dash. Let's go back to base color and we can change this to something like an overlay, for instance, which is going to darken everything a little bit more. Uh, I usually like doing that to to uh, merge things. Now, see that thing right there? That's a problem with the tri planner projection. So here on the dirt, um, we're going to change this to trade planner. Same for the clouds. We're going to change this to tri planner down here. So there we go. That way we, we don't get those uh, seams uh, as obvious as, as what we have there. And again, we can play around with the, with how many. If we don't have any intensity, as you can see, the rust is everywhere. But if we add a little bit of the cloud effect, let's bring the, the, the contrast down a little bit. And that's going to give us a really, really cool look. Nice. Yeah, that's looking cool. Uh, I think the size of the pipings that we have, this one right here, might be a little bit too high. Let's go back to something like a 5. Because we have a very noisy, like, triangular thing right here. And then the pipes were also quite noisy, so bringing them down uh, really helps. One thing we could do uh, for this insulator, we can change the projection to triplanar projection as well. That should make the triangles look a little bit cleaner. There's a little bit of an overlap here and here because they, they kind of, like, go down. I don't know why my dogs are going crazy, uh, but yeah, that that, that kind of works. And I'm even tempted to like lower the intensity of the rust a little bit. Like I do want to have like those like splotches and stuff, but I don't want them to be like overwhelming, right? Um, that's it. That 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 looks pretty cool. We're I think we're in a good position. Let's keep going. How are we doing on time, by the way? Oh my God, it's 33 minutes already. Mm. I might have to do it uh, tomorrow, finish tomorrow, because I don't want the video to go super, super long. Uh, there's one more thing I'm going to do, and that's the, the decals. But I'm going to do it as soon as we come back from this commercial. Hey, guys. Abraham here. I just wanted to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. There we go. So you guys know that we have this very cool uh, Skillshare promo. So if you want to check it out uh, down here in the description, we are actually have a very like in-depth class about uh, Substance Painter in case you guys want to check it out. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to create a new fill layer and this is going to be a fill layer that's going to be affecting only the height information of my object. And the height information is going to go down. And I'm going to right click and add a black mask. And now what, what we're going to be able to do is we can go into our brushes and grab like the basic hard brush and then go into the alphas. 
uh, where the alpha is right here and select any sort of alpha that we want to add more details this is pretty much like what we were doing with the booleans but without the need to like actually create the boolean so for instance here i can just add like this little icons there and it's super super handy because we don't have to worry about uh, modeling this all of this lives inside of the texturing uh, information of our element so by adding just like a couple of this ones right here and here for instance we immediately make this thing look a little bit more like complete right so i'm going to use the exact same like a uh, bolt on all of the pieces that i want like this ones right here that are really flat like adding a couple of this ones like on the on the main like uh, unions i think it's a good idea something like that and then we can go for crazy alphas or not crazy alphas but things that are a little bit more like interesting looking such as like this panels or this like uh like i really like this sort of like triangle that looks interesting i'm gonna turn off uh this uh thing right here and for instance up here uh, we can add that triangle on the mask maybe we can add like this uh sort of like paneling thing like right there we can even rotate the um the brush a little bit so down here on the angle i'm gonna change the angle a little bit slightly uh, there we go that one i actually do want to have it symmetrical let's go for i don't know like this rectangle let's rotate this we can add like one two three four five bends on the sides of that thing and then like down here we can go for something simple with just like holes remember how we had this idea on the sculpting process let me see real quick we haven't saved in the <laughs> it's uh what's the word i'm gonna save it on the desktop because i'm really scared it's raining right now out there and uh, <laughs> uh here in mexico unfortunately we don't have like the greatest electrical uh like uh infrastructure so we suffer from continuous or not continuous but frequent uh blackouts uh they usually don't last that long but it's uh, it's quite annoying i really like this dots so for instance we can add some of these dots like here right i'm gonna go back for like like a circle let's add like a couple of like bolts here and there again all of the areas that we don't have a lot of detail we can add some of this like little little, little indications not everywhere right we don't need them everywhere but just on a couple of areas that make it look a little bit more interesting I kind of want to add something here, but I'm not sure what. Something like that? Does that look good? I don't know. Looks kind of weird. I think I think we're fine, to be honest. So, yeah, this is pretty much it, guys. Uh, I mean, we're not done, of course. Let's go to IRA real quick to get some nicer shadows and stuff we're not done i would say this is like part one of texturing I, I was actually hoping to move a little bit faster but uh since i've been explaining the whole process things uh moved a little bit slower than i expected uh but i think this is looking quite nice we're still missing a lot of details that i want to add uh, texturing wise i'll show you one thing that we can do with uh, anchor points tomorrow and uh yeah we're, we're then gonna jump into rendering so hang on tight let me know what you think in the comments and i'll see you back on the next one Bye bye